One of the most difficult tasks in pool is to draw the cue ball precisely to a certain point. Very often people under or even overdraw the shot. Today we are going to talk about how to draw the cue ball precisely. In this video, we are going to talk about how to get better results when drawing the cue ball. First I will introduce the different factors that matter, then we are going to talk about the common problems that many players have with the draw shot. After that I am going to show you a very good drill to work on your precise draw shots and at the end I have some good tips that will also help. So let's start. The most obvious factor obviously is where you are hitting the cue ball. The lower you hit below center, the more backwards rotation you will get. The second factor is the speed of your cue when hitting the cue ball. The general rule is, the faster you hit, the more rotation you get. And the third factor is how much you follow through the cue ball. The general rule again is, the more you follow through, the more rotation you get. But wait, as you can see in this slow-mo, I'm following through the cue ball a lot but the tip of my cue and the cue ball separate right after contact. So if they separate immediately, why does following through the cue ball even matter? The important thing to realize is that follow through and speed are very closely connected. We're going to combine both and call it timing. But what does timing mean? When you shoot, the cue stick obviously accelerates from zero speed to its highest amount of speed and then begins to slow down and finally to stop. So a graph would probably look something like this. Having the right timing means that our cue hits the cue ball just a moment before it's moving at its highest speed, so we're accelerating through the cue ball. Imagine you're playing a shot where you don't follow through the cue ball and just stop immediately right after contact. It's just not possible and would look really weird as you see here. And that's why speed and follow through are very closely related and called timing. One more important factor is the distance to the object ball. The further away you are from the object ball, the harder it is to draw the cue ball. And that's because the cue ball loses its rotation on the way to the object ball because of the friction on the cloth. The general rule is, the further you are away from the object ball, the more rotation you have to put on the cue ball. And of course, there are some more factors like the cloth, the air conditions, the temperature and so on. One of the most common problems is that players are not hitting the cue ball where they intend to. As you see in this slow-mo video of a student, he aims lower than he actually hits the cue ball. You can check if you are having the same problem by making a slow-mo video like this or by using the Jim Rampy training cue ball that shows you with a chalk mark where you actually hit. Another problem is that as we learned before, speed is only one part of the puzzle. It's also about the right timing, which means follow through combined with speed. So hitting a bit softer with the right timing can actually get better results than a harder shot with a bad timing. Following through the cue ball more can help if you're timing, but actually finding the right timing is nothing I can teach you here. This is something you just have to feel. You probably experienced the feeling when you overdrew the cue ball by a mile. This is possibly because you got the perfect timing there. So practice your draw shots until you can just feel and even hear it. Ok, this is the setup for the drill and all we have to do is to play the balls in order from 1 to 6 and we aren't allowed to touch any rail with the cue ball. I'm starting with ball in hand here and what you see me doing here is, I'm putting the cue ball on the straight line for the two ball and playing the one ball from this position because that way I can visualize a lot easier where the cue ball should end. So if I'm on that line, I will have a perfect shot on the two ball. And as you see, I'm also a little to the right of this line, which is perfect here, because I don't want to draw straight back. I want to draw to the center of the table, so I need a tiny bit of an angle, that means cutting it to the right. And as you see, the cue ball should stop perfectly for the free ball at the center of the table. So these were basically two perfect draw shots. Here, all I want to do is to bring the cue ball a tiny bit to the left, that means to us, because I want an angle on that 4 ball to get up table for the 5 ball. So this is basically the easiest shot I have in this whole rack because I just need to play a stop shot or maybe a tiny bit of a stun shot as you see here. 
cue ball drifted a little bit to the left and now I have the perfect angle on that four ball. Here you see me measuring the line, I want to be straight of course on that five ball and all I have to do here now is to play a stun shot. And a stun shot is not a draw shot, that's true, but it's also a very important shot to train. So playing a stun shot, going um, crossing the line, that's true, but um, when you're drawing most of the time you're crossing the line. So um, this is basically the perfect shot that I got here on the five ball. Now one more shot, I want to be straight on the six ball of course, um, because I don't want to touch the rail. So again, I need to draw precisely and I'm not calculating here. I'm just feeling the shot, playing a draw shot, ending perfectly on a straight line. And from here it's basically a draw shot again or a stop shot, whatever you prefer. And uh, this is the drill. It uh, looks easy, it isn't easy, you don't have to play draw shots all the time, that's true. But uh, it really helps you with the draw shot here. As you see here, I have to go all the way up table towards a 9 ball. But with the right timing, it's not very difficult to draw the cue ball all the way back. You see, this is far away from the maximum draw that I can get here. And even if the 9 ball is further away, I just increase the speed, still have the right timing, of course, with the right amount of right hand English to go towards the 9 ball, and I still have a perfect shot on the 9 ball, and again, this is far away from the maximum that I can do. And of course something like this also happens. Here I did even too much, but this doesn't change anything related to the draw shot. And as you see here, I almost made this shot. And to show you that the most important thing is the right timing, the right Conte point on the cue ball and the right speed, I took the first house cue I got in this pool club, I didn't change anything on the tip on the cue and I played this draw shot. So you see, even with a regular house cue you can really get a lot out of the cue ball. And now imagine if you have a good cue, a good shaft, a good tip with the right curvature, how much you can actually do. As promised, I have a few general tips that will help improving your draw shots. Hold the cue very level to the table and don't shoot with a steep angle. Have a loose wrist and grip because that prevents you from choking and can also give you a little more forward momentum. The grip here is very loose and maybe don't fit to everyone, but I think you get the idea behind it. Use the tip curvature of a dime. This is the perfect curvature because you have the biggest contact area on the cue ball, no matter if you're adding left, right, high or low. This will also allow you to add more spin to the cue ball and it will also be less likely for you to miss cue. Using a close bridge can also help, but I just personally prefer an open bridge. And one of the most important things, not only for draw shots, slow down your backswing. All the cue action comes from the final forward stroke, not how fast you move the cue backwards. So slow this down or possibly even make a pause at the end and then deliver the cue in a straight line. Only doing this can do wonders. Okay guys, I know this was a lot of information I gave you in this video, so here is my summary. Well, the theory actually helps that I gave you in this video to reach your goal faster, but in the end it's just about you. How much time you spend at the practice table, how often you practice draw shots until you can finally feel the shot. Because pool is a game of feel to be honest. Of course, you could do calculations, you could do something like the object ball is three diamonds away, I want to draw two diamonds. Um, considering the cloth, I have to hit um, yeah, one tip below center or two tips below center with speed 1.7 and then the cue ball should end exactly on this point. Yes, you could do it, but um, to be honest, I don't think that's the way to do it because, as I said, pool is a game of feel. You just feel the shot, you feel the speed in your arm, you're visualizing and then your muscle memory does the job. So it comes a lot to practice. And I, for example, I didn't know about all of this that I taught you in this video when I started playing pool and uh, even for a long while after I started playing pool and I still can do all of this that you saw in this video. So yes, it's nice to know the theory, but pool is a game of feel. Okay guys, I hope that you've learned something new in this video, that you've enjoyed it. If so, consider to leave a like, a thumbs up, 
a like and a thumbs up. It's basically the same. Uh, a comment, share this video with your friends and uh, maybe consider to head over to Patreon. I've got a lot of cool stuff there, um, bonus materials. So consider to do that. And yeah, that's it for today. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks to my sponsors. Thanks to my patrons. Also a special thank you to the guys who are translating my videos into different languages so that people can see it all over the world who don't uh, speak English. So um, a big thank you to you. Okay guys, thanks for watching. And as always, see you at the next lesson. Take care.